days, we're going to be doing a little bit of a review to start, and then into stuff that you should remember, but seems to be my other two classes did not. So we have to kind of go quickly through the newer stuff and go um, slower through the latter stuff. Okay, so everybody should be on the screen. You got here from your home screen, from your transfers list. Is everybody good to go? Okay, so our essential question today is how do we solve two-step and multi-step equations? This should be easy for you guys. You should have all picked up papers in the back of the room. If you didn't, please do so now. Okay, so essential question, how do we solve two-step and multi-step equations? We're going to go through this relatively quickly. This is not stuff that's new to you. So what I want you to do is turn the page. Who remembers how to turn the page? Control over. Control over. So control over. And notice on the smart board, the keys that I press are red. So control is right here. Over is on your nav pad, which is your circular round key. Control, literally, like the computer. Okay? Is everybody on this page now? Mm -hmm. All right, so it says, to solve two-step equations, we work the order of operations backwards. Who can tell me what the order of operations is? Tons ass. Tons ass. Good. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What's P stand for? Parentheses. What's E stand for? Exponents. Exponents. What's M stand for? D? A? S. Does it matter what order I do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division in? No. no. Okay, good. All right, so I was very kind and I gave you directions on how to solve this. We're not going to do it on our calculators. We're going to do it right on the paper that you have in front of you, okay? So very quickly, I'd like you to solve this first equation, okay? Once you have it solved, I want you to meet with your partner. Make sure that you both have the same answer. Okay, do we have an answer? 11. 11. So we got... A equals 11. Now, how can I make sure that I am right? Okay. Izzy? Plug it in. Plug it in. And what's yeah. that called? Substitution. Substitution. So you're going to substitute back in your solutions. 7 times 11 minus 17 equals 16. We're going to see if it actually works. Okay? So we get 77 minus 17 equals 60. 60 equals 60. Is that right? Yes. So should you ever get a single one of these problems incorrect? No, because you're always checking your solutions. Does anybody have any problems with this? Okay, turn to the next page. Control. Over. Okay, so this is just the work that we already did. This is just showing you how we went through it. Nobody had any problems with that? We're going to flip to the next page. Control over again. Okay, the next two problems are on your worksheet. What I'd like you to do is take a minute to do both of these problems. Make sure that you check your solutions, okay? Check with your partner to make sure you guys are getting the same answers. I'll give you a minute to do this. I'm going to try and remember your names. This probably won't go well. Jean, what did you get for B? Negative 2. Did everyone in this room get negative 2? Good. Okay. Bryn, what did you get for C? Everybody in this room get five. Do we have any problems at all with this? Let's move on. Next page. This is our next problem. This one's done a little bit differently because we're dealing with fractions. Okay? We're going to do this one together as a class. This is on your paper. You're going to do this on your paper along with us. So everybody see it in front of them. All right, so you're not typing anything into the calculator, you're doing this on the paper. Are we all clear? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. All right, so who's going to tell me my first step? Subtract 21. Subtract 21 from both sides, good. So subtract 21 from both sides. Vinny, next step. Good, multiply both sides by 8. And we get D equals 8 times negative 7? Negative 56. Are we done? We have to check. Okay, so we're plugging back in. Negative 56 divided by 8 plus 21 plus 14. We get negative 7 plus 21 equals 14. And 14 equals 14. Does anybody have any problem with this? We're doing okay? 
the next page. Okay. The next one is on your paper. Go ahead and do the, this next problem. Check it with your partner. Okay? I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, so we had a little bit of confusion as to how to start. What's my first step? Not divide. Multiply. multiply. We're always using inverse operations. So I have to multiply both sides by 9. So I get f minus 15 equals negative 54. Next step? Add 15. And I get f equals what? Negative 39. Negative 39. Am I done? I have to check. Okay, so I'll do that over here. Negative 39 minus 15 divided by 9 equals negative 6. And negative 39 minus 15, which is 40, 54, negative 54 over 9 is negative 6. And that does check. Okay? All right, so when you're dealing with a whole fraction where your number here is on the bottom, and you're dealing with one single fraction, you need to get rid of the denominator first. The last one we had an addition and subtraction and outside of that, you deal with that first, okay? So you have to remember the difference between the two. Go to the next page. Uh, how are you matching the calculator on the side? Next page. Okay, I want you to try one more, and then we'll move on. All right, first step here is to do what? Multiply, multiply by what? Four. Okay, so we're multiplying both sides by 4, which leaves us with 17 minus g equals negative 40. Next step. Subtract 17. And we get negative g equals negative 57. Do I want to know what negative g is? No. What do I want? Okay. How do I figure it out? Divide by negative 1, which is just going to give you g equals 57. I don't need you to write that step out. It can if you want, but I, I know how you changed it, okay? Last step would be to, to check it. We all know how to do that. We're going to move on from this lesson, okay? So what I need you to do now is go home, go back down to transfers, and choose lesson 1b. Because we want to learn how to solve inequalities. Who can tell me what an inequality is? Any kind of thing that you think an inequality might include? Yes? Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Okay, yeah, I see where you're going. Pac-Man. What did you mean by Pac-Man? Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or greater than. So we need to learn how to solve these. Okay? So, go to your next page. This is actually going to tell you what it wants you to do. Okay? On the next page, you're going to see something. Um, it's called a slider. It's a number line. What you're going to do is you're going to learn how to grab a point and move it from one side to the other. Okay? Let's go right to your next page. Our goal is to solve this expression, my inequality. Okay? I want to know what input values, that's my x, I can use in order to have this left-hand side of the inequality greater than the right-hand side. Okay? So now we're going to learn how to grab a point. So I want everybody to take their nav pad and you're going to scroll around until you get close to this point and you see a hand appear. That looks like it could grab it, okay? So scroll around using your nav pad until you get close to this point and the hand appears. Does anybody need help? Can I do the back You're not on the point then. You want to say point. So we'll scroll to a different spot near it. Okay, now this point, but okay. it's near the thing that does. Okay. okay. Does it look like that? No. It looks like a finger? Yeah, it's going like this. <laughs> so, okay, hold on. Move it lower. Go with the finger. Okay. Who remembers how to grab a point? <laughs> control. <laughs> click. So control. Click is going to grab that point for you. You'll actually see the hand closed. Is everybody's hand closed? Mm -hmm. Okay, once that hand is closed, you can use your nav pad left and right to scroll along this number line. Okay? And what will happen as you scroll along this number line is you'll notice this value here 
your x value that corresponds here will be changing. You see that? Mm -hmm. You see the number down here changing? Okay, mm -hmm. so this x value is your input. This value here is your output. You see? Mm -hmm. I want to know what solutions make this inequality true. For what values of x is 2x plus 3 greater than or equal to 5? I want you to find me that solution. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move my number line, and I want you to watch my x value, and I want you to watch this number down here, okay? My goal is to get it to be greater than or equal to. Is it equal to? Yeah. Now what happens here? Is it greater than? So what numbers are going to be in my solution? I've got x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've got a bunch of solutions, right? When we deal with inequalities, the way that I'm going to write this, or one of the ways I'm going to write this, is I can say x can be greater than or equal to 1. That means x can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. How high is it going to go? Infinite. Infinite, right? So that brings me to another way I can write this. There's three different ways you need to know how to represent this. This is the first way. Second way, close bracket, open bracket. Have you seen that before? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. This closed bracket means we take the number. It's part of our solution. Open bracket means it's not necessarily a part of our solution. Do we have a set number for infinity? No. That's why it's an open bracket. Okay. The last way we can write this, 1 to infinity. Okay. So these are the three ways that you can answer this question. Okay. These are all solutions to this same inequality. Is it all coming back to you now? Good. Answer the next two questions. Are we stuck? Non-integer. What is an integer? Give me an example of an integer. One, two. One, two. What else? Negative three. What else? Negative five. Zero. Those are all integers. So give me an example of a non-integer. 1.2. Is that on the number line? Yeah. Do we have it written up there? No, but it, would it fit for our solution? So name me three non-integers that would work. 2.5. What else? 3.5. What else? 1.5. Do you have solutions now? Those are non-integer solutions. Okay. Number three says to express the answer in interval notation. We already looked at it in interval notation. You just have to know which one of the three is actually interval notation. This is interval notation. Okay? So if the Regents exam says to write in interval notation, this is what we're looking at. Okay? Any problems? Next page. Okay, it's telling us exactly what to do. We're going to look at the same exact kind of idea. We want to see the values of the expression on the left-hand side of the equality um, increase. So what we're looking at is this, hmm, is this inequality. 2x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 7. I want to know what values for x make this statement true. What values of x is going to make 2x plus 3 greater than or equal to negative 7? So you're going to use... The same thing you did before. You're going to move around this value and write me the solution. You're going to answer the questions that go along with question two on your sheet. Okay, so work with your partner. Okay, so the first question says, which direction left or right along the number line results in an increase in the value of the expression on the left? So which way from zero do I go to make this left side bigger? To the right. Okay. So similarly, which expression would you make to make it uh, the two expressions equal? Left. Left. And how did you figure that out? What was your goal? What were you trying to do? Oh. Yeah, you want to make the two sides of the expression equal. Okay? Any problems with that? Okay, so if you were to solve this inequality by hand, would you get a different answer? No, you get the same answer. What is the answer? X has got to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Give me two other ways I can write this. Close bracket, good. Good. Negative 
infinity. Good. Okay, one more way. Somebody else. Could you put negative five first and then push the sign? This one? Yes. Yes. So okay. negative five as well. Yep, you can do it that way. One more way. Yep. Perfect. Nice job. Okay. Next page. Okay, move the white point and observe the change in the value of the expression on the left. What is the solution to the inequality? Okay, so this is question three. You are going to do the two problems, the two questions that go along with it on your worksheet with your partner. Now, it's not going to be perfect, okay? I believe the directions called it, um, well, I guess they do say solution, huh? Okay. It may not come out perfect. Give it a shot. See what happens, okay? Okay, let's come back together. Anybody have a problem when you try to do this? Yes. I use a calculator in uh, convenience. Uh-huh. It will give you a fraction. We'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. So we have a problem, right? Can't figure it out the way it is because when I move this cursor around, I'm going to get 7, 10, 7, 10. So it's in between here, right? Mm -hmm. So I have an issue. Think about another way to solve the problem. We just got done learning how to solve equations. But well, couldn't I solve this? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to solve it. You're going to set it up the same exact way you would an equation, except instead of having an equal sign, you have an inequality sign. Negative 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 8. These are these algebra. 8th grade math. Yep. Okay, what's my first step? Subtract 1. So I get negative 3x is greater than or equal to 7. Stop. Divide by negative three. No positive. Divide by negative three. Now, very good. That's very important. When you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip your sign. Okay? It's very important that you remember that. So this becomes x is less than or equal to negative seven thirds. Okay? Now I had people tell me, okay, Mrs. Scucci, I got a fraction, but I can't get it into a decimal on my calculator, right? So I want everybody to go to a calculator page. So control I. Add calculator. We said negative seven thirds, right? So if I put in negative seven divided by three and I hit enter, it's gonna give me negative seven thirds. If I want to put this into a decimal, I hit what? Remembers, I told a, bu a bunch of you. Control, enter. Negative 2.3 repeating. Okay? The way that we would write negative 2.3 repeating, negative 2.3 repeating. Okay? So would your sign still be flipped for the answer? Yes, which was, no, I don't remember. Was it like that? Yeah. There's your answer. Okay? I am more than happy to see an answer like this. I like fractions. They don't scare me. Okay? So leave them like that. I don't care. You're going to get fractional answers all the time on the regions. Get used to them. Not everything needs to be in a decimal. Yes. So the, they're still looking for like if the sign was flipped the other way, would you just drop the negative sign? No. You left the sign flipped the other way, you'd get it completely wrong. Okay? All right. Next page. Okay, there are two screens on the next page. One of them is your number line, the other one is la uh, the other one is an actual graph of the lines y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals negative 7. Okay? These two pieces are going to work together to show you the inequality. What you're looking for is if the arrow between the two lines points down, the left side of the inequality is greater. If the arrow points up, the right side is greater. Okay, so go right to the next page and let's look at how this actually works. Down below we see our two lines. The diagonal line is your line 2x plus 3. Your horizontal line is your line y equals negative 7. Okay? This arrow in between is going to show you what, how the inequality is working. So what you're going to do is you're going to move your slider and you're going to watch 
your input values and your export values and how that reacts with your graphs down below, okay? I want you to answer the questions that go along with number four, question four, and come up with a solution for me. Okay, so when I move this cursor, I'm going to find that at negative five, I am equal to negative seven. If I continue to move this cursor to the left, what's going to happen? Am I still going to be greater than? Yep. Careful. No, negative nine is less than. So I need to be moving the other way. So my solution becomes what? X has got to be greater than or equal to negative five. Okay, give me two more ways, more ways to write this. Okay, third way. Perfect. You getting this? Do we understand it? Are we seeing it? Good. Next page. Okay, next screen contains the two graphs, y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals negative 7. The number line is the x-axis. Does that make sense to everybody? That's what an x-axis is. It's just a big number line. How can you use the model to estimate the solution of the inequality? Notice it says estimate. Does estimate mean we're going to get a perfect solution? No. no, it's an estimation. Okay, so you're going to go to the next page and you're going to estimate what the solution will be. You're going to move this point here. You're going to watch your values and figure out as close as you can where the value of x is going to make it greater than or equal to negative 7. Okay, okay let's come back together, please. Come back together, please. Okay, so we were able to move our cursor on our x-axis. I can see it somewhere. That's not the right thing, is it? I'm going to hit Control Z and undo whatever I just did. Okay, where's my point? Here's my point. All right, so I'm going to move this and I want to get it as close to negative 7 as I can. It's got to be greater than. So if it becomes 7 point something, is that greater than negative 7? No. No. Negative numbers are opposite. Okay, so I have to go back here. Negative 6.94 is my output value that I'm going to get as close as I can. Is that my solution, that negative 6.94? No, I need my x value. My x value is down here, negative 4.97. Now, do these values have to be greater than or less than negative 4.97? Greater than. It's everything to the right. So the way I'm going to write it is x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 4.97. Give me two more ways to write it. Okay, somebody else give me the third way. Perfect. Anybody have any problems with these? Are we clear on how to find these now? Does anybody have any concerns? Good. Okay. Last one. Last page. You will see a number line and another inequality. This inequality has variables on both sides. How can you use the number line to determine the solution to this inequality? So here it is. We've got variables on both sides of the inequality. Okay. What is our goal? Solve for x, but looking at this, what's our goal? Yeah, to get both sides of the expression equal, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to move around your number line and figure out what value for x is going to get you as close as possible. Remember, this is an estimation. It's not going to be perfect. Okay? So give it a shot. No? Kind of close? All right, I'm going to show you how to do this algebraically. Let's see how close you came. Okay? Okay, so 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 2. Who remembers how to solve these when you have variables on both sides? Got to combine like terms or 
and move everything to one side. Yeah, you got to get all the variables to one side. Good. I'm going to add 3x to both sides, which is going to give me 5x minus 3 less than or equal to 2. Add 3. 5x is less than or equal to 5. Divide by 5. x is less than or equal to 1. Okay? So if you came close to x being or less than or equal to 1, you did pretty well. Okay? So remember, there's more than one way to do these. We can do them graphically, we can do them algebraically. Okay? We're pretty comfortable with inequality stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, one major rule. When you multiply or divide by a negative, what do you have to remember to do? Flip the sign. Okay, everybody go to your home screen. You're going to open up lesson 1C. How do we solve absolute value equations? All right, so everybody knows what an absolute value is, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Absolute value is the distance from zero on a number line. So if I told you to give me the absolute value of negative five, you tell me? Five. If I told you to give me the absolute value of five, you tell me? Five. Five. Makes any non-negative positive, sorry, makes any negative positive, makes any non-negative, non-negative, stays the same, okay? So if I asked you what the absolute value of negative x was, you tell me? X. What you're going to do on your calculators, because this is a note screen, you are going to scroll down using your nav pad. Down to here. You're going to be doing it on your calculator. You're going to be typing in your calculator now, okay? So we're taking things a step further. So once you get here, you're actually going to hit your X key. Remember, it's just like typing on a computer. Those green keys are your out keys, okay? So everybody should put in X. The absolute value of negative X is X. Does everybody have it in there? Now that we've changed this document and we're typing into it, we want to make sure that at the end of this lesson we save our changes. Okay? So don't close down without saving. I'm telling you now. I'm warning you. Okay? Yes, dear. Uh, it'll go to into a sleep mode. You shouldn't be not touching your calculator long enough for it to go into a sleep mode. Okay. Control over to the next page. Okay, when solving absolute value equations, there's something that we need to remember to do. Because we're dealing with absolute value, you can have two solutions. It can be positive or negative. Because we know that an absolute value changes the negative into a positive. Okay? So, if I look at the first equation, I've got the absolute value of 2i minus 4 equals 12. The way we solve these is by breaking it up into two equations. 2i minus 4 equals 12. 2i minus 4 equals negative 12. Do you see the difference? Okay. We are going to solve these in our calculator by typing. So what you're going to do, using your nav pad, you're going to scroll down. And you're going to go to the next line that doesn't have anything there. And the way that you do that, because you're going to get here and you're going to keep pressing and nothing's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Hit enter to get down, just like on a computer. Okay? So if I were to solve these equations normally, what would I do? I would add 4 to both sides, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, 2i minus 4 plus 4, so that's what I'm doing, I'm adding 4 to both sides, equals 12 plus 4. Do we have to put them in or do we just put the answer like 2i equals? If you feel comfortable doing that, that's fine with me. This is for you to remember. Okay, so to get down again because I want to keep solving and I'm just going to hit enter. And I know that... Uh, we're now going to have 2y equals 16, right? Yeah. Equals is right here. Okay. Does everybody have this much? Now what do we do? Divide both sides by 2. So I'm going to be bidding. <laughs> 2y divided by 2 equals 16 divided by 2. What's your answer? 4 equals 8. 4 equals 8. Any problems? Where's the divide? Divide is right here. Oh. How did you get the 16 in the first place again? 12 plus 4? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So I want you to do the same exact thing to this equation here. You're going to solve it out by typing it in. Okay? Okay, do you all have what I have? Yep. Do we have any problems doing that? No. Last step is to check it. Okay? The next screen is going to show us how we need to check this. Are you ready? Okay. Go to the next screen. 
Next page. Okay, it's important to remember to check both solutions because they won't always both work, all right? Um, your solution, the way that we're going to do this is the next page is a calculator page. We're going to follow these directions, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put in one of your solutions, such as eight. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to hit control, and then var, and then y, and then enter, okay? So go right to the next page, and this is the same exact process we're going to follow. Press eight. Press control, gray button. Bar, AR, right here, and then Y, and then enter. What that did is it made it so every time you type a Y into your calculator page, it reads it, reads it as eight. Okay. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put in the first part of my equation. So the first thing I need to do is put in absolute value. Who remembers where you find mathematical symbols? Look over here. In the book. Go to the book. The book above the division sign. Everybody see it? Yep. Okay, which one am I going to choose? Right here. That's the value sign. Okay? What it's going to do is it's going to pop an absolute value sign onto my calculator page. Does everybody have it? Mm -hmm. um, how did you? Are we all here now? You're going to put in exactly what the equation says. 2y minus 4. Okay? 2y minus 4. Does it show up in absolute value signs? Yes. Hit enter. Does it give you 12? Yes. Does your solution check? We're going to do the same exact thing with our other solution. Okay? So we need to go through the steps again. Our other solution was what? Negative 4. So we're going to do negative 4. Control. Bar. Y. Enter. It's stored. Y is negative 4 now. Now put in your absolute value sign. Book. It's in option four, so if it's giving you tab one, just hit the number four. It'll bring you over to option four. Okay? Scroll over and get your absolute value and click on it. 2y minus four. Does it give you 12? Does your solution check? Who remembers how to write a set of solutions? Curly brackets. Yeah. Negative four. Okay. Those are your solutions. Okay, so you press control, home, it brings up your tools, it brings you to this nice little menu. Okay? We want to be on the file menu, so you're gonna hit your center button, your click. Okay? Which option are you gonna save? Save or press the number three, and that saves it for you. Okay? So at the end of every single lesson that we do, unless I specify as otherwise, you always save at the end. Now, how would you save something on a computer shorthand? Oh, no. Control what? Control S also saves it. Okay? So you could do it this way, or you could just hit Control S, and that'll save it. 